Let's talk some more about plotting in R. So here I've got the plot from our last video where we're plotting the pedal widths versus pedal lengths for the iris data set. Now we've got some custom axis labels where we're just writing in pedal width, pedal length, and we're coloring all of our points by species. And this is what this plot will produce. Now one issue here is that we've got these vertical lines of points. So the pedal width data seem to be incremented. And there are actually a lot of overlapping points in this one band, but they're really hard to see because these points are right on top of each other. One way to fix that problem is to add some random error in either direction for this x-axis to all these points. And that'll open this up a little bit and we'll be able to see how many points we really have here. The way we're going to do that is with a jitter function. So I'm going to apply this function to my x data. Jitter is a function. The argument is the data that you want to jitter. So I want to jitter these x values. If I execute this, we can see that these points spread out quite a bit. And we can actually see more clearly that we really do have a lot of points here rather than when they're on top of each other. Another type of plot that's really useful is a histogram. Histograms show frequency distributions. So let's see what one looks like. I'm going to make a histogram for our pedal length data. The first argument is the data that you want a histogram of. And let's see what we get. Well, we've got pedal length on the x-axis and frequency on the y-axis. And notice that pedal length is binned. So all the observations falling between 1 and 1 1.5 are being binned into this group and counted up. And we've got over 30 of those. Similarly, all the observations between 1.5 and, and 2 are binned together. And we've got about 12 or 13 of those. One useful argument for the hist function is breaks. Breaks allows you to specify custom breaks along this x-axis. So the argument to this function is going to be a vector of values that specify breakpoints for these bins. So what I want to do is use a sequence of numbers starting at 0 and I'm going to have it end beyond the end of our data. So let's end it at 7.5. And as you'll recall, this sequence function, this third argument is going to be the amount that we increment by. So how much are we going up by for every one of these steps? Let's start with 0.5. There we go. This looks really similar to our last plot, except now we've got extension over here to zero and a little bit of extension beyond our last observation. We can make these bins even smaller if we reduce the increment size. So instead of 5, I'll do 0.25. And that can give you even a finer grained picture of the distribution of pedal lengths in our data set. The last plot that I'll mention is a line plot. And for this, I'm going to use a special data set in R that's reserved kind of like this iris data set. And it's called sunspots. So I'm just going to plot sunspots. And I'm going to specify that I want a line graph by typing in type, as in type of graph, L in quotes, for line. This shows us the frequency of sunspots from 1750 to present day. Now if we wanted to, we could make this a dot plot instead of a line plot by just changing this to P for points. So now our type is equal to P. And every one of these data points is just a point rather than being lines that are connected.